Hello friends, welcome back. Now today I'm going to go through some of the comments you've made recently on some of the videos I've posted, some of the reviews, some of the lists um, that I've put online. Now let me assure you I do read every single one of your comments very carefully and I'm very grateful um, for them. Some of them I haven't responded to in person so I'm going to try to get around to those first. Now, firstly, Victim of Love, which is one of Elton's uh, least popular albums, possibly the one that most people put uh, right at the bottom. Uh, as I've said before in my reviews, you know, there is some good material on here, but there's a lot of sort of fairly average material as well. I like the title of track um, and a couple of the others. And I have suggested in a previous video how this album could be made into an even better one with the addition of a couple of other tracks. Um, anyway, um, Cootmaster's come in with um, some uh, comments on this, um, saying that um, things to consider about Victim of Love is that uh, Elton and Bernie didn't write anything on it. Fair enough. Secondly, it is in the disco genre. Uh, and, but thirdly, it is Elton singing it. So when you put all those together, you've got an, an oddity, haven't you? Um, a lot of deep cuts. And it's interesting to have it in the genre. Um, and Kumaster says that artists should try something different. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, is there? It depends on how successful they are. Um, and, um, you know, we do salute uh, Elton for trying this. It's just it didn't particularly come off very well. Um, he has done other types of disco songs. I suppose um, you could maybe say Philadelphia Freedom is a kind of a disco soul um, sort of song. Bite Your Lip, Get Up and Dance is another one that comes to mind. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with trying that. It's just that some of the material on the album was a little bit on the weak side. Now, I did a video on storing my CDs and I'd taken off the plastic covers and fitted them into these uh, envelopes. Now, I have almost finished the project, got to say, and uh, from a massive pile of CDs, I managed to get them into one cabinet. Um, now, somebody's asking here, it's um, CBF, is asking, well, how did two and three CDs fit in one sleeve? Actually, pretty well. Um, you can get a three CD set in this as well as a, you know, a, a booklet that's not too thick. Um, and I've managed to do that on a number of occasions. For instance, I think I've got a Bruce Springsteen triple CD set, which I managed to get into one of these. They take up much less room. Now, the last ones I've been doing have been the Elton John ones because they're kind of so precious. But I have managed to um, start to uh, transfer them. Uh, Made in England there, songs from the West Coast. Uh, Madman as well getting in there and they look quite nice you know um, you can see everything you need to see it protects the CD well um, the only thing you don't get of course is when you're looking at them side on you don't get any idea really of what is in them so that's the downside but the storage side is really good I think um, and um, you know I think it's a reasonable project to do anyway uh, Dirk has sent in some ideas about future videos I should do uh, especially as I've completed all 30 solo albums. Well, the next one that's coming out, I can tell you, I'm working on at the moment is Friends, and that's going to be out very soon. But I do like the idea of putting these league tables together. Um, I've done Elton's opening tracks in order. I've done the closing tracks in order. Uh, another one I'm looking out uh, to do is the title tracks, putting those into order as well, some sort of ranking. Um, so Dirk's saying, here's an idea. Top 30 tracks written by Elton and other lyricists. Slinging them all into one pot. That's a good idea as well. I'm going to look at that. Um, the other one I'm looking at is instrumentals. I'm going to look at all of Elton's instrumentals and rank those in order. Some really good ones in there. Some not that well known, actually. And he's also suggesting Elton and Bernie in other scenarios, such as Hello, Hello and Love Builds a Garden from Nomeo and Juliet. I don't know any of the songs at all from that. Uh, I haven't even got that CD, so I've got to get it uh, and review that one. Uh, there's also Fern Gully, which I've heard one or two of the songs from, but again, I need to go into more detail of that. So there's going to be lots of these videos still to come. Uh, and of course, we do enjoy putting things into rank order, don't we? It's just for fun. But top 20s, top 30s, they always get a good response from subscribers. Now, I did a video on the 50th anniversary of Madman Across the Water, and Derek uh, is saying, of course, it's the 50th anniversary of Honky Chateau. Uh, we're kind of a year out, aren't we? And some of these anniversaries were delayed because of COVID. So hopefully we're going to get some new material uh, on Honky Chateau, uh, maybe uh, in an extended CD set. I've been watching some videos uh, on the um, Beatles albums coming out, and there's some fantastic uh, souvenir editions of these, double albums, triple albums, box sets. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. I know a lot of it appeared on Jewelbox, but what about going through each of those albums 
making them into a double or a triple CD, um, demo tracks, other recordings of the, um, the tracks that actually appeared on the albums. So, you know, early takes of those. Do those recordings still exist? Uh, might be interesting to hear. I don't know. Goodbye in a Brick Road, the first recording of that, then the second and the third, just to see how it changed, how they balanced different instruments. Uh, you know, I think there'll be a lot of interest in that. So um, whoever owns all that material, um, and you may know better than me, uh, why not start issuing that in some sort of box sets, which could be uh, vinyl as well. Now, Beth also making some comments about Madman, saying that the Mick Ronson version of the title track was actually the original version and was recorded during the Tumbleweed session. So thanks for that. Um, so it was the um, the second version that Elton did, the one that ended up actually on the album. And of course, that's the one I think I prefer and, and maybe you do. Um, Beth saying the album didn't receive great reviews upon release. Uh, in fact, Elton has stated in interviews he wasn't happy with his vocals. Uh, well, I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, and if you weren't happy with that, Elton, you know, we probably are now because I think the vocals are fantastic on that album. Um, you know, they sound really good. Uh, maybe on later albums that might have been an issue, uh, something like Leather Jackets, which perhaps the vocals weren't that strong. Um, so, you know, th those are brilliant recordings now. But again, it would be interesting to hear some other takes on those, wouldn't it? A note on Rock Me When He's Gone, uh, which is one of the bonus tracks on this new edition. Um, Beth saying this was recorded by Long John Baldry, the sugar bear who's in Someone Saved My Life Tonight, for his album It Ain't Easy. Um, and um, I noticed, of course, that that track also appears on the Rare Masters of Elton John. Um, so I actually have got that already. Uh, and that Madman was the first album to feature Davy Johnston, um, after which he was offered a full time job with the band. What a great decision. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, fantastic to have him as part of that band. Uh, too low for zero. J.A. says that they originally had this on cassette, which wore out. Yeah, they did wear out a bit, those cassettes, didn't they? I've hardly got any cassettes left at all um, of uh, Alves. And they always just get mangled up, didn't they, a, a bit or, or stretched when you left them in the car. Um, J.A. has subsequently replaced this with a CD copy. Um, and still plays the album all the way through from start to finish, including the filler tracks. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit like that. There's very few tracks that I uh, skip over uh, when I'm listening to them. I've got Breaking Hearts in the car at the moment, uh, and I've been enjoying listening to that. But I did have to say I skipped over Passengers. I heard the, the beginning of it, uh, and that was just enough. I had to touch the button. I listened to everything else, even the ones that you know not that keen on. But um, Passengers, um, and the other one I would do is, would be Solar Prestige from Caribou. That's definitely a skip over track for me. I, I listened to it for the review recently, but apart from that, I really don't want to hear that one again. J.A. says they love the title track Too Late for Zero. Yeah, I'm going to be rating these title tracks very shortly. Uh, that song has grown on me, I think. I've heard out on, um, you know, on YouTube doing some live versions of that. It's an interesting one. And the instrumentation, which is a bit electronic, is quite interesting as well. So I think it's quite an underrated uh, song, actually, that might, might have got better through the years. Now, Paul has commented on one of my videos on what Elton should sing at his final concert. I came up with a playlist and lots of you uh, sent in your views as well. Um, Paul says, I don't think I counted any from Madman in your imaginary set list. Well, I thought I had um, uh, a couple in there, actually. Uh, I would certainly recommend uh, uh, Leave On. Uh, I would certainly like him to sing Indian Sunset uh, and Madman Across the Water. Um, so I'd be very happy to see any of those, um, as well as Tiny Dancer. Paul would love to see, um, I've, I've seen that movie too, uh, from Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, I would as well. Um, haven't really heard Elton do that much live. Um, it's a great song, that one. Very atmospheric, very powerful. Um, Amarina as well. That's that's a song which you know, I've grown to love quite recently. I've been trying to play that on the piano. I've got a good book on that. Um, and I'm going to do a review of that book at some stage as well. Um, it's a lovely song to play, actually, as well as to listen to. Um, and uh, Paul also talks about the ending of Goodbye uh, on uh, Madman, which again is a very atmospheric, very haunting song uh, from Elton.
Now, Mark's talking about um, my video on closing tracks, which was the best one. And Mark's saying Blue Avenue is a wonderful song as well. And I would agree. That's one of Elton's most unusual tracks from Sleeping With The Past, of course. Now, on the subject of closing tracks, when I did my video, um, I used from Wonderful Crazy Night the song England in America, which I like a lot. Now, a couple of people have pointed out that this is from the deluxe edition. So um, this is the one with the bonus tracks on. And that actually the original album closes with the open chord. So I might have to try and just slightly change my uh, league table on that one. Um, but I do like the open chord. I've listened to it again a couple of times recently. Uh, and it's a nice song, actually. Um, sort of uh, middle of the road, sort of rock ballad, I suppose. But uh, an enjoyable one, um, which would still rate fairly highly in my league. Now, recently I reviewed The Union with uh, Leon Russell and 007 has sent in uh, their ratings for each song. These are always uh, interesting ones to uh, to go through. Um, the favourite tracks there seem to be the opening track of It Wasn't For Bad. That's always been highly praised, wasn't it? And was a, um, nominated for an award, that one. Hearts Have Turned To Stone, um, that gets an 8.5. I Should Have Sent Roses gets 9.5. Nice song, that one. When Love Is Dying, 8.5. I rated that a bit lower. I felt that was too reminiscent of the 1980s in a way. Um, and um, Mandalay again, getting 9.5. That, of course, is one of the bonus tracks which you'd get on the vinyl album. Um, now, interestingly, my favourites, Hey Ahab gets a 10 from 007. Very wise. Monkey Suit, though, the other one I really rated from there, uh, only gets a 7.5. So many thanks um, for those comments. Uh, MJ comments, uh, it's a totally brilliant album. It is faultless. Uh, I would agree it's very good. Uh, I don't think any album is faultless, actually, because um, there's always one track that's slightly better than another. Uh, but I get what you're saying, uh, and it's a lovely one to listen to. Now, some comments about 21 at 33. Uh, Lexi uh, comments about the song White Lady, White Power. Now, I did mark this down a bit because I felt it was glorifying drugs but I think I got that wrong uh, and a number of people have pointed out that in fact what it's doing it's it's um, condemning uh, drug use and saying that this is a bad thing um, and um, how how can we escape from addiction so uh, Lexi says the song actually talks about the perils of addiction and warns us about this and it's about overcoming it so yeah I think I've probably got that one wrong uh, and it's, it's a decent song isn't it um, uh, Lexi says, read the lyrics again and carefully and what the song is about comes to light is revealed. Uh, much love from Sydney. So um, if you're watching there, Lexi, thanks for your comments. Uh, and I'm glad there's lots of Elton fans down there in Australia who are following the channel. Now, I produced a video recently on which Elton John album you should buy first. So what's your advice to somebody wanting to get into Elton's music? And SoundLab has come back with some comments suggesting that the Elton John album of 1970 is the best one to start with. Starting off with uh, Elton's, one of Elton's finest songs, Your Song. You've got great lyrics from Bernie, Paul Buckmaster doing the um, orchestral arrangements. I would agree to a certain extent with that. Um, but it's quite a serious, it's quite a dark album, this one, isn't it? Um, and I wonder if anybody would get the right impression of Elton from this. I would certainly get that into your collection because it's an excellent album. But is it the one that perhaps presents the best cross, cross section? Um, and I think, um, you know, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road has such variation in it. Um, I think I would definitely point them towards that album uh, as a first one to get into. Then moving maybe into something like Tumbleweed. Don't Shoot Me, uh, Madman for that serious side, along with the Elton John album of the earlier ones. The Sound Lab is saying move on to Don't Shoot Me, um, then to Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. So fair enough there. Um, then to Honky Chateau. Uh, not sure about that. Uh, Madman, definitely. And after that, um, perhaps to Captain Fantastic. I think I'll probably put that one further down the line in a way, because... Um, that, again, is quite a sort of uh, serious album, one for the dedicated fans. Not so many sort of commercial songs on that. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe after that, um, they're recommending Rock of the West is. Now, that's an interesting choice. I'm not sure I'd put that too high up. Blue Moves, definitely love that album. Uh, although, it, again, it's one for fans, isn't it? It's one for fans uh, who would appreciate that variety of song on there. Two over zero, yeah, that's a good later one. And songs from the West Coast uh, from quite recently. So some good suggestions in there. Many thanks for that. 
Now, more comments on uh, the union. Turner has come in with uh, their own ranking of the songs. Number one, Hey Ahab. Number two, Monkey Suit. So definitely with you on those. Number three, Hearts Have Turned to Stone. Now, there's quite a lot of support for that one. So many thanks for those uh, comments. Um, the one that gets um, the least uh, marked is Never Too Old, um, which um, you know, perhaps it wasn't uh, my favourite on there either. Uh, Jim says The Union is a very good album. Uh, I'll have to check it out. So if you haven't heard it yet, have a go at listening to that. Um, Dave is going to buy the album now uh, and listen to it. Now, a recent discussion on Elton's best album covers. Uh, MJ has joined the debate saying Ice on Fire and Captain Fantastic sum him up to me. So um, both very interesting, very different album covers, aren't they? Uh, minimalist uh, look to Ice on Fire, which the colours in there. Captain Fantastic, of course, reminiscent of uh, Sergeant Pepper. Um, so a fine album, that. Now, some comments on my video about Elton's farewell set list. John is pointing out that the One Night Only CD, which I do have, is a terrible recording. Um, I wouldn't say it's that bad, actually. Maybe he's talking about production. I think the versions of the songs um, are pretty good, actually, uh, on that, considering it's later on in Elton's um, performing career. But I will review that one, and we'll get down to the nitty-gritty on that. John is also commenting on uh, my uh, video about Elton's farewell set list, saying, why put Indian Sunset in there? Because most people don't know it. Um, there's a big debate there, isn't there, on whether uh, Elton should just include sort of crowd sing-along songs or put in some special tracks. Now, dedicated fans like you and I probably would really prefer lots of deep cuts in there, whereas a more casual fan, um, they want to just get up and dance and sing along. So it's a difficult... Um, line to tread there isn't it exactly where um to place that maybe there should have been two different types of farewell concerts uh, these big sort of stadium venues for the casual fan and maybe smaller sort of maybe or even theaters for the more dedicated ones for instance bruce springsteen did that broadway show didn't he uh, in relatively small theaters uh, but you know perhaps going into some of his back catalogue that wasn't that familiar. So that would be an interesting forum, wouldn't it, um, to appreciate Elton's music. Now, Elton's closing uh, album tracks, again, have been rated by 007, putting the last song as their favourite. Yes, I agree with that. That's a great track. Sad Songs, second. The Captain and the Kid, third. Um, and uh, The King Must Die from uh, the Elton John album, fourth. All very good tracks. Bottom of the pile for 007 is Bite Your Lip, Get Up and Dance. Um, I think that's quite fun, actually. Uh, quite a nice track from Blue Moves, uh, but obviously not to everybody's taste. Now, also on the same theme, Chad has written in with their uh, top 10 of closing tracks. Um, with We All Fall In Love and Curtains from Captain Fantastic Number 1. Um, I like those. I prefer We All Fall In Love to Curtains. Um, but still great. High Flying Bird from Don't Shoot Me is a fantastic track, yes. Uh, and This Train Don't Stop There Anymore, again, from Elton's later period, is a brilliant uh, classic track there. So thanks for those comments, Chad. Jack has also joined that debate, putting Ticking at five. Um, great lyrical storyline, yeah. The King Must Die at four. Uh, lovely and dramatic. Goodbye at three from Madman. It's just such a beautiful song. Harmony at two, I had that at number one. A peculiar chord progression and ambiguous lyric. Yeah, that's so creative, isn't it? And number one for Jack was Curtains. Um, Curtains is my favourite closure and I dare say one of my favourite tracks. Um, a bit of a Hey Jude sort of feel to that one slightly, isn't it? The way it plays out and repeats over and over again. Uh, and finally, a few comments about Empty Sky, uh, Elton John's first album, of course. Although somebody took issue with me over that, and I'm not sure whether they're referring to this um, regimental Sergeant Zippo uh, thing, which I don't really know much about at all. So um, if anybody wants to clarify that, I'd be grateful. Um, but Jim is saying that the demos and B-sides on the Rare Masters CD um, include the soundtrack for Friends, um, and um, some other great tracks there. So um, that's certainly worth listening to. Again, I'll do a separate review on this, which is a double album. Um, yes, um, 
Lawrence is saying uh, that he must be the only one who loves the song Sales from Empty Sky. The lyrics have that cinematic foreign film imagery that Bernie was so good at, plus a mature Elton vocal that only crashes at the falsetto at the end. Um, yeah, it's an acquired taste, some of those songs on the early album. I mean, they're interesting to have uh, because it was right at the beginning of his career. A little bit on the edge of pretension, some of them, I think, and a bit difficult to know really what uh, they're all about. Uh, and Rob says that uh, the piano version of Skyline Pigeon was the B-side of Daniel. In several countries, the piano version appears to have been an A-side in its own right. Um, and of course, it's one of Elton's best loved songs. I love the piano version over the harpsichord version, although opinions differ on that. Uh, and Rob is also saying that It's Me That You Need was a hit in Japan. So much so that when Elton played in Japan in 1971, he played It's Me That You Need solo. Quite a beautiful song, that one, isn't it? We don't hear enough of that. This performance, immortalised in the first visit bootleg, is the only known performance of his third single. Well, that's really interesting. I wonder if that uh, bootleg is still kicking about anywhere. I suppose the idea of bootlegs, the idea of bootlegs now is perhaps a little bit outdated because there's so many versions now um, of live concerts on YouTube. People sort of take their phone out, video the whole concert, not in any great quality, and you've got people standing up in front. Um, it's kind of devalued the idea of bootlegs in a way, which is slightly disappointing. Um, but um, it's still obviously nice to see uh, little clips of um, concerts going on now and then. Anyway, that's probably enough uh, from me for now. Thanks for all your comments. I'm still reading them, still reacting to them. Um, I'll put below um, my new website address. On this website, I've just put a, um, links to all the videos that I've produced so far. There's also tables with each album showing how I've rated um, each track on there. I'm still trying to fix a way for you to send in comments on it. Not quite working yet, um, but see what you think there. And if you want to sort of see all the albums in order there, um, they're all there um, if you want them. Anyway, that's it for now. Don't forget, we're still standing.